Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Lee and I'm a DIY electric skateboard builder. And today in this box, I've got something super cool to show you. In here, I have a brand new motor controller from a company called Spintend. It's the Spintend U-Box and I'm gonna be unboxing it, showing you what it's like, and we're gonna have a look at what's inside today. Now, I hear you say, Lee, haven't you already done a video about this controller? And yes, I did do an initial impressions of this uh, motor controller. However, that was taken down for a trademark strike. Now, I don't manufacture this controller, nor uh, am I selling it at the moment. We might sell it if it's any good, um, but I don't sell this product. I'm just reviewing it based on what I think about it, guys. Like I always tell you whether I like things or don't, what I don't like, blah, blah, blah. I show you the good and bad in everything. Now, unfortunately, that bothers some people. It bothers people with a financial interest in me not doing that for you. So all I'll say, guys, is that I'm gonna carry on reviewing products. I'm never gonna stop. I'm not gonna change what I'm doing and I'm always gonna give you guys my honest thoughts on everything. Some people don't like that and that's fine. That's totally up to them. I did actually call this controller by a name that we all use to describe it. And I won't say what that name is. I'm sure you all know. Even though this controller is based on that project, the hardware is based on the designs from that project. It uses the firmware based on that project and you use that project tool to configure this thing. It isn't actually one of them. So from now on, we'll be calling these things motor controllers because I don't want to get another trademark strike on the channel. So anyways, on with the video. In this box is the Spintend U-Box and there's a few other bits and pieces in here, but I'm just gonna get this out for you. And this is the device itself. It is a dual motor controller and it's a 75 volts, 100 amp controller. So that means that this can run at 16S and they claim 100 phase amps, motor phase amps per side. So essentially this can push quite a bit of power. Um, you'd never run it at 75 volts, 100 amps because that is the absolute maximum limit. But we will be using this at 16S and seeing what it's like. Now, interestingly, there are a set of ports, all your usual ports that you get on a motor controller each side and two USB ports. So I think before we open this, I'm gonna predict that this is a dual MCU controller and it's got a shared power circuit. One other thing it does have is a connection for a BMS, but the BMS isn't out yet. It has a switch, which is also really nice, and it has a horn and a light. Now, I'm gonna show you a clip from the last video that I made to show you these working. Oh, Jesus Christ, that is loud. <laughs> oh dear. Wow, that was loud. Right, I've got some ear defenders on now. And what about the light? Yeah. So I'm turning this on and off from the remote light. Off. And trust me guys, that was super loud, that horn. I put a 6 dB uh, limiter on the audio. So that audio was four times quieter than it is in real life. It's a really loud horn. I have spoken to Spin 10 since then and they have said they're gonna source a quieter horn because I think it's probably a little bit too loud. <laughs> Now there is also a companion remote that comes with this thing. And as you've probably seen in that clip, I was activating the horn and the light with the power switch here. Now, altogether, these are really cheap. This is $200 for what is essentially a high voltage, um, high amperage dual motor controller. And here we have an integrated remote. And I think altogether it was like $229 or $220. Not, not a lot of money anyway, guys, for what is a complete package. Now, one thing I will say about this is it's a fairly chunky device. I've got a set of calipers here. So it's 113 millimeters by 83 millimeters by 25.4 millimeters. So it's a fairly chunky thing. And I wonder how much it actually weighs. Okay, it's coming in at 395 grams. So it's actually 45 grams heavier than the Stormcore and uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty heavy, guys, actually. It's a pretty chunky thing. I wonder how much of that is heating. So, okay then, guys, it's time to get this thing open. Got my trusty iFixit toolkit. Now, I just wanna say, whilst I'm here and I'm opening this up, 
I have the utmost respect for Ben Vedder. And Ben Vedder is the guy that invented the VESC and this guy that runs the VESC project. And I would never do anything to harm um, his brand or his business. I do have the utmost respect for Ben Vedder. But it has to be said, it was Ben Vedder and it was Frank that got this video, the last video taken down. So, although I don't blame Ben for any of this, I can sort of see how it happened when he's teaming up with the guy with about as much moral fiber as a wet tissue paper. But Ben, I love you, man. Would never want to damage your project, bro. And I'm very, very grateful for all the things that you've done for us. So anyway, that's the 10 bolts out and we can lift this plate off and see the device itself. Very, very interesting. Super, super interesting, guys. So I'm gonna turn this around the other way so you can see it. Now we can see initially straight away that this is a dual MCU controller. There's an there's a MCU for both sides, which is very nice. It's all integrated um, into one. So if one side does fail, then you're gonna to have to change the whole board. We also have an integrated 2.4 gigahertz receiver and that is for the remote. So that's the receiver for this remote. And we also have a Bluetooth module so you can connect to this and you can change the settings of this with that very popular tool uh, available for mobiles. But yeah, I mean, there's not a lot to see. All the MOSFETs will be underneath. So I guess there's another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's another seven bolts here, same size, which is really nice. I always like it when the bolts are the same. So they're slightly shorter than the case bolts, but it's the same size tool. Ah, that's a different size bolt, okay. So we have to know where each one goes. Right, I'm just gonna get all these bolts removed and I'll be back in a sec. Okay, that's the last bolt out. So I guess we should be able to just remove this. There we go. So we can't actually remove it fully from the case because um, it's got bullets soldered onto the end now, but we can open it up and flip it around. And what we can see here is actually this is, this is two boards. So there's actually the main interface board and then there's the power stage at the back, which is pretty cool. I don't know if we could easily separate them. We'll have a go. I'm not going to separate them. I was going to have a go, but it's a little bit tricky. Oh, those MOSFETs are cool. I've never seen anything like that before. Yeah, it definitely says DK38AB. FDBL0150N80. Okay, guys, so these MOSFETs are the Fairchild FDBL0150N80, which is an end channel power trench MOSFET. 80 volts, 300 amps, uh, 1.4 milliohms. And what I'll do is I'll leave the date, a link to the data sheet in the description for these MOSFETs, but they look like the very high uh, quality components and have been sourced from overseas. So these aren't Chinese sourced MOSFETs, which is really nice. So I'm just looking at the capacitors and these are 80 volt, 330 microfarad capacitors. So there's actually six of those. So there's quite a lot of capacitance going on here. Lovely, not really a lot more I can say about this. It looks like it's been built very, very, very well, guys. There's no solder balls. One thing I always try and check is the phase wire soldering. That's always a good giveaway as to whether this has been done properly. I don't know if you can see in there. I'll try my best to get you to focus on this. But um, the soldering has been done extremely well. Hopefully that's focusing, I've no idea. If not, I'm going to get the GoPro and show you the GoPro. Very, very good soldering. Yeah, it looks really, really nice. I wonder what this weighs without the case. So the unit itself without the case, 176 grams, 177 grams, let's call it. There's quite a lot of metal here. Although it does feel that this controller could be significantly smaller with a different case. That feels like there's a lot of um, empty space in here. I'll just pull this back. I do think this case does add up to a lot of the bulk of this controller and uh, it could definitely be a lot smaller. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this though. I think this is going to be a really nice controller.
So there we go then guys, a high voltage dual motor controller. I'm really interested in this thing and I am going to build a 16S mountain board and I'm gonna use this controller to power it. Now I know this is probably a little bit shorter and a little bit briefer um, than my usual what's inside videos and that's because I can't, I just couldn't bear to do another in-depth video on this controller after just doing one last week and having that work taken away from me. So. I uh, hope you'll appreciate that guys and uh, we will definitely be looking at this more in depth um, over the next couple of weeks when I build that 16S mountain board up. I've got the BMS coming and I'm looking forward to putting this thing to the test guys and of course all of that will be documented on the channel. So guys all that's left to say is thank you very much for supporting me in this situation and for all you people that jumped on the thread in eSkate News and supported my point of view. The only thing I would say to you guys is vote with your wallet. There are so many new products coming out guys, so many exciting developments within the eSkate scene. You don't have to spend your money with people that don't respect us, that do not like us and actually have almost a disdain for the community. I find it completely disgusting myself but there you go guys. Um, Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.